The Boston Celtics are good. Like, really good. The gap between them and the second seeded Milwaukee Bucks in the Eastern Conference is over 14 wins. That's a bigger gap than it is from the first seed to the 10th seed in the West. But the Celtics' dominance hasn't only stood out in the standings, it stood out on the court as well. In fact, here are the top 100 players in the NBA this season in regard to their on-court plus-minus per 100 possessions. Stephen Curry and De'Aaron Fox should probably spend more time on the court if it means more points for their very mid-teams. Anthony Edwards has played the most minutes on this list with a plus-minus of 8.4. And as MVP candidates, Jokic and Shea are just at another level. However, this upper tier isn't dominated by any individual, but rather a team. The Boston Celtics have complete control over the NBA, and they're doing it as one of the most dominant teams ever. 40 wins, 20 losses. It's called the Phil Jackson rule. If a team reaches their 40th win before losing their 20th game, they're essentially established as legitimate title contenders. There's no science behind this, but it's proven to be accurate. Since 1980, 40 of the 44 NBA champions abide by this rule, a near 91% rate. This season, OKC, Minnesota, Boston, and the defending champs have all hit their 40th win before their 20th loss. In fact, Boston isn't even on pace to hit 20 losses on this season. But history doesn't indicate that that's a good thing. Since 1980, there have been 27 teams that avoided losing 20 games in a season. Want to take a guess at how many of them went on to win a championship? It's not even 50%. Only 13 of them went on to win the title. A high win regular season isn't correlated to winning championships. According to the numbers, it's essentially a coin flip, and this season's Celtics are going to hope that it lands on threes. Boston is an offensive juggernaut, and they love three-pointers. They've made over 1,288 threes, which is the fourth highest total ever. Their first in three-point percentage, over 41% of their points come from threes, they have the highest offensive rating in NBA history while ranked second in defensive rating alongside a near 61% true shooting percentage. The second highest mark of all time. They shoot a lot, they make a lot, and they defend. It's kind of like those Rockets teams, right? You know, back when Houston had the philosophy of shooting till your arms fall off, Boston has seemingly adopted that same style. Because the Celtics are attempting the 5th most 3 pointers per game in league history, up there with their team from a year ago and those late 2010 Rockets teams. But is shooting a historic amount of 3 pointers a good thing? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no. Because of the 15 highest 3 point attempted seasons in NBA history, not a single one of those teams won the championship. In fact, none of them even made it to the NBA Finals. Live by the three, die by the three is a real thing. The Rockets infamously bricked 27 consecutive threes to lose Game 7. And just last season, these same Celtics went ice cold from deep against Miami, virtually ending their own season. Jacking up threes like you're playing at an arcade machine is not a viable strategy to win a championship. However, I will make the case that these Celtics can be the exception. The addition of Porzingis has changed the dynamic of their offense. If the threes aren't falling, they just throw it down to him in the post to take advantage of his size. But if the defense collapses, he throws it back out, they swing the ball a couple times and get a great look from deep. That's the difference between those Rockets teams and these Celtics. Houston had the three, and only the three. They were one-dimensional. Boston has a weapon that makes their offense multi-dimensional. And without mentioning a superstar who's willing to sacrifice shots for the betterment of the team. Something that those Rockets teams lacked. And he may just be the key to a championship for the Celtics.
Who do you think is the best player in the NBA right now? Uh, myself. Jason Tatum is averaging over three points and two shots less than he did a season ago. It's not great for his individual numbers, but it's made him more lethal. He's shooting the second best field goal percentage of his career. He's improved his deep ball by nearly 3% while averaging a career high in assists. Tatum is picking his spots and playing within the flow of the offense and it's resulted in one of the most efficient seasons of his career on the most cohesive Celtics team he's ever been on. He sounds like an MVP to me. Maybe not. JT's MVP case has been thrown into a black hole, never to be seen again, and the only person to blame would be himself. March 5th and March 7th were two days that could have established Tatum as one of the favorites for the MVP. Matching up against a red-hot Cavs team, followed by a face-off against the defending champs in Denver. Safe to say, he didn't show up. A solid performance against Cleveland was ruined by his poor shooting in the clutch, and he followed it up with an absolute stinker against the Nuggets, finishing the game with more turnovers than field goals. What's kept Tatum out of the MVP conversation all year was put on full display in back-to-back -back games on national television. His clutch shooting is horrendous. He's 38th in the league with 58 total points, dead last in percentage among players who've shot at least 45 field goals, and he shoots 26% from three. That's the 32nd worst among guys who've shot at least 15 threes in clutch time. And when you compare him to some of the top players in the league, you seriously question if he's been shooting with his eyes closed. His numbers are that bad. In fact, Joel Embiid has missed about half the season and he's only 12 points behind Tatum's clutch total. These are not the numbers you want to see headed into the playoffs, considering Tatum has had a history of falling short. Like the 2022 finals against the Warriors, when he was on one game and off the next against the Sixers, his three-point shooting in the conference finals against Miami last year, he struggled before so who's to say it won't happen again, especially considering he's been terrible in the clutch all year. The truth is, it's incredibly rare to see a young star dominate and reach success in the playoffs. You have to fail first. At 22 and 26, LeBron had two final series that he'd like to delete from his resume. Giannis was quote unquote exposed against the Raptors in heat in back to back years and even Kevin Durant lost multiple conference finals and an NBA finals before the age of 28. Jason Tatum is 25. He's just entering the prime of his career. Actually, he's at the perfect age. The greatest players of this generation have all won their first championship in that 26 to 28 year old range. JT is right on track with some of the game's greatest players. But this season feels like it'll be his best shot at winning a championship because these Boston Celtics are playing like one of the greatest teams ever. At the beginning of the video, I asked at what point does a great team become a dominant one? Well, how about 9 wins by 30 points? Or 4 wins by 40? Or how about 3 wins by 50? This is seriously one of the greatest offensive teams of all time. To put these Celtics into perspective, here is every team's net rating this season. The Pistons and Wizards have been bad. But the Hornets, the Hornets have been brutal. The Lakers and the Rockets barely make it into the positives, while the streaking Mavericks have a respectable 2.3 net rating. As we continue climbing up, you'll see the Knicks and the Pelicans, who honestly don't get enough respect for what they've been doing this season. They're only behind legit title contenders in the Nuggets, Thunder, and Wolves in that 5-7 to seven point range. And the Boston Celtics are all the way up here. Dominance is truly the only word that can describe what they've done to the NBA this season. And in terms of the greatest net ratings of all time, 
Well, they still find themselves near the top. The 2024 Boston Celtics are playing like one of the greatest teams of all time, and the championship is theirs to lose. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.